This is the rebirth of the Kia Optima. From humble to hot, from bland to bold. The Optima versus the previous generation was night and day. It was a high-risk makeover with billions at stake. Could a plain Jane sedan be turned into a supermodel? If it bombs, you've got a $2 billion mistake on your hands. They fired up a futuristic assembly plan, poured buckets into research and development, and recruited the world's top auto designer. He is absolutely brilliant. But could he do the near impossible? Turn a perennial wallflower into the life of the party? It's been a David and Goliath type story. Now buckle up while we take you for a spin in the fast lane. Through design, testing, and production, it's the birth of a Kia Optima. This is the new Optima, a car that has undergone one of the most dramatic makeovers in the auto world. It's the new face of Kia. Since 1944, the company has been known for making reliable, inexpensive vehicles, from bikes and motorcycles to workaday trucks and basic sedans. But if you were seeking thrills, you would not be looking here. I've heard it described rather unflatteringly as the grocery getter. You bought a Kia because you had to. This was a company known for nothing but little tin boxes, and they had virtually no value, no interest, other than the fact that they were the cheapest cars you could buy. By 2006, cheap wasn't cheerful for the bottom line. Demand for this conventional sedan had topped out at around 50,000 cars a year in North America. Competitors in the same class were selling at five times that rate. The challenge? To take this grocery getter and turn it into something that would set it apart in the market. Failure would bring public humiliation and a possible loss of millions, if not billions of dollars. This was a big gamble. The company had an ace up its sleeve, a newly recruited superstar in the world of auto design who is to oversee a global team of designers on a mission to turn a simple, functional ride into a true object of desire. Peter Schreier was a house on fire. He made a huge difference. When design met engineering, it was time to put it to the test. In the extremes of the California desert, the Optima was subjected to reliability, handling, and even comfort testing. In essence, the overall engineering of the car. It's far beyond what most normal drivers and vehicle owners will ever see. Finally, the Optima hit the plant, an ultra-high-tech facility ruled by robots. We have 240 resistance welding robots that produce between 1,300 and 1,500 cars daily. The entire makeover risked failure if the intricacies of design and engineering couldn't be mass-produced at an affordable price. Since the start of this journey, the company has been hanging its future on the vision of one man, designer Peter Schreier. Leading a global team from his base in Frankfurt, this designer has done the near impossible, turning the company around almost single-handedly. Peter Schreier's numerous design awards include Man of the Year from prestigious Automobile Magazine. As a star at Audi and Volkswagen, Schreier's pedigree certainly qualified him for the job, but that didn't mean this was going to be easy. His vision would either make or break the future of the Optima and perhaps even the car company itself. It's a huge challenge for Peter to come from a company like Audi to an underdog car company, the best challenge of all. He was to tackle the entire line and create a new face for the automaker. Kia is like a clean sheet of paper. I had the chance to completely start on a white canvas and I could say shape the brand the way I thought it would be right. When we heard he went to Kia, we were shocked. I mean, really shocked. The Optimo was to be the pinnacle of Schreier's redesign, created to be a competitive high-end vehicle at an affordable price. The hardest thing to do is to build a car like this because it is so competitive. There's so many players involved. You can write a check and build a Ferrari or a Lamborghini, but if you want to build a bestseller, 
It's a very, very tough proposition. The new Optima would put the company on the world stage, open to the scrutiny of consumers, other car companies, and the toughest critics. There was a certain degree of risk uh, in Kia taking this approach to do a, a very high-styled, mass-market, mid-size sedan. Uh, I think it was a calculated risk, and I think they had to do it, because otherwise they wouldn't have attracted any attention. The previous generation of the Kia Optima was a very capable vehicle. However, it lacked styling, it lacked excitement. Uh, consumers were not typically drawn to that vehicle. The old Optima, it was a car that people bought if they were very rational. It wasn't a car that people, let's say, were aspire to buy. Mechanically, the new Optima is a revolution from the old one. The old Optima, if we take a look at this example here, has the V6 in it at about 194 horse and 184 foot-pounds of torque. The new Optima has a four-cylinder direct injection, 200 horse and 196 foot-pound of torque. About 23 to 25 percent better on fuel, way more refined, better on emission, so it's a lot more car. The direct injection engine is very strong. A little bit of, of low-end noise because direct injection is a bit noisier of, of a process, but uh, tremendous performance for, uh, for the size of car and excellent fuel economy, which is another advantage of, of direct injection. Peter Scherer designed a great car. We need to make sure to back it up with great technology, meaning GDI engine, six-speed automatic, great suspension, great safety, great ergonomics, and a leading-edge technology hybrid. On a journey to prove its efficiency, the Optima Hybrid crossed 48 states using only five and a half tanks of gas, averaging 900 kilometers a day. For this feat, the Hybrid was awarded with a Guinness World Record. I think that um, Hybrid is a very great technology, very important for us. The Optima Hybrid has industry-leading polymer batteries and an electric motor that can achieve 120 kilometers an hour without the assistance of the gasoline engine. It's cool to drive a hybrid car because uh, suddenly you don't hear an engine anymore, you just glide along. I think uh, it's not only important to make nice design, it's, it's important to make good cars with good performance and good uh, fuel consumption. And this huge field comes to life, and I'll tell you, nothing like hearing all this power. One of the things Kia is doing that will go a long way to turning this whole perception of a car without quality uh, around is entering racing. When we participate in racing, it puts Kia in a, in a different level. Somehow we belong to the club. The Optima race car a Kia Racing, I mean, that is the ultimate test of credibility because it's put your money where your mouth is. If you win on Sunday, then you sell on Monday. That's always been the case. Welcome to the Motor City and the Detroit Belle Isle Grand Prix, the latest stop along the Pirelli World Challenge circuit. Start your engines! Every weekend through the summer, car makers from around the world go head to head on tracks like this. This is one of North America's top production car competitions. And this year, there's a new player in town. I have to be honest, when we first showed up, they kind of chuckled a little bit. The hardcore race fan, maybe the other racers themselves, the people who are in the paddock that we're competing against, and they didn't really take us very seriously. Camaros, Porsches, Mustangs, and Caddies. Most of the usual heavy hitters are here, showing off their latest creations and getting ready to put them to the ultimate test. It's been a very uh, interesting uh, David and Goliath type, type story. It's a monumental challenge, but is the path to the podium possible with the vision of Peter Schreier and his team? It's good design, and that fundamental good design has made it a good race car. Coming up, it wasn't easy. Starting from scratch had certain freedoms, but also plenty of pitfalls. This fresh face was on a journey to the end of the line. Would the industry's harshest critics buy in? Inside the Kia car company, there's a new mission, to build vehicles that buck their practical image and give drivers something bold to get excited about. They'll have the full support of the most high-tech facilities in North America. But it's an ambitious challenge, a process laden with risk. 
Building a brand is the toughest thing to do in the car business. Mechanical reliability, that's only science. You can figure that out. Fit and finish, you can eventually learn that. Styling, you can hire somebody. But establishing a brand, that's very, very difficult. The star player in this company's makeover is Peter Schreier, a world-class designer with an automobile legacy second to none. For Kia, whatever they're paying him, it's not enough. I mean, he has been, to me, the key to establishing an identity. The greenhouse sits very far back, so this gives it this kind of, of dignity. Design is not just the surface, design goes beyond, and it's actually the connection between man and machine. The makeover began with a new face. When I look out the window here all the time and I see the traffic, and when the cars stop at the traffic lights, some of them you recognize. You can see, aha, uh -huh, that's a BMW and that's a Mercedes. I wanted Kia to be recognized, and I want people to have an awareness of our brand. And this is why uh, one of the first things that I did was to create a special grill and, uh, and a special front face and an expression that fits to Kia and that is new and that is so distinctive so no other car has it. Uh, so I did this shape with the two tabs in the middle that somehow uh, are a little bit like teeth. The tiger nose would become one of the defining features of the new Optima and the face of an entire car company. Look at a tiger, like a tiger's nose, like it comes out and has the, you know, this strong three-dimensional look to it. And it, it, it's, a, it's a symbol of power and dignity and the way the tiger looks. If it was not that iconic or that distinctive, you, you would not recognize our cars immediately and then they would just pass by anonymous. Then the ultimate challenge head up an international team of designers to completely overhaul the Optima and make it a winner in the most competitively ruthless class of automobiles. Peter Schreier has a knack for understanding what consumers are looking for in a vehicle. Um, he's able to do so by injecting incredible styling cues in a vehicle, but at the same time exercising uh, the necessary restraint so that car doesn't go overboard. And the Optima is a perfect example that actually appeals to the widest demographic I have ever seen. Design is now a global language. There are trends in some places. In his studio in Germany, you'll know about cars that have to perform on the Autobahn and cars that are high luxury. And there's a different expectation from different areas of the world. You have to now have studios everywhere, which he does. He has a new studio in Shanghai and he is in the air most of the time. A competition was held that included design teams in Frankfurt and California, all filtered through the rigorous approvals of Kia headquarters in Seoul, South Korea. This would be a car with truly international DNA. Usually I start by getting the team together and start to brainstorm and they start their sketching phase. We review it several times. They get more and more focused on their concepts and, and their ideas. Eventually we'll have a, a big 2D presentation. Then we'll start developing some models, usually in quarter scale, in clay. Eventually uh, there's a big presentation in front of top management in Korea and one model will make it, will be chosen. With only one destined to win, most of the early designs are rejected. It's the one that has just the right scale, the right curves in the right places that Schreier is looking for. The most important thing for me is the proportion. You know, it's not the, as how many lines you put on the side of a car. For me, it's the proportion. How does the greenhouse sit on the body? Uh, how are the overhangs? What is the, the, the width? the stands, the surfaces, the tension of the surfaces. We have to build up on the wheels and then we do the, like the windscreen and, and this is the actual shape of, of the roof and the way it flows into the trunk. The winning exterior design is from the Italian-born Davide Limoncelli, based in the Frankfurt studio. When uh, Peter uh, chose my design, I was super happy about it because it was one of my most important projects so far in the company. A 3D video wall helps the design team get a sense of what the car will finally look like before they truly commit. 
The lines of the car are built around what are called the pillars, the A, B, and C. These are the vertical supports of the car's window area, or greenhouse. The reference points anchor the lines of the design and determine whether a car is boxy or sleek, compact or stretched, and ultimately whether or not it will be eye-catching. The way you get a kind of sports car feeling is that in an, in an extreme case, you have the cabin sitting on the wheels really far back. That gives this kind of long bonnet, stretched, low look. The weight is more on the rear wheel. In a way, we got that quite nice. It has this kind of luxury, luxury sports sedan look to it because of that trick. So great feature for Optima is that chrome line. And it goes from the inside of the A-post, this is the A-post, all the way across the car, along the car, right to the very end of, of the C-pillar. So it shifts the cabin back and gives the whole car this kind of classic proportion. The C-pillar looks pretty low and stretched that way and, and also lowers the car without losing interior space. It's more, a, if you want to say so, an optical illusion or an or a optical trick to give it that stretched and low sporty look. From the muscular shoulders to the style of the rims, Schreier and his team blend all the finer details together to create a cohesive and seamless design. Usually, once the engineers get wind of what the design team has in mind, there's plenty of argument over what's actually doable. After all, form still needs to function. In the case of the Optima, there were few compromises that had to be made. One was smaller wheels, every designer's first sacrifice. We had bigger wheels at the beginning. <laughs> of course, they had to have a reasonable size. But shape-wise, I have to say, we didn't give up everything. We had a, such a cooperative uh, atmosphere within the company, we could achieve a lot and we could bring uh, almost 100% uh, in the production. Once Schreier was happy with how the car was going to look from the outside, he turned his attention to the inside. It's the first driver-oriented interior that we've done. And what I mean by that is the shape of the, the cockpit and the instrument panel, it sort of emphasizes the driver and puts uh, places an importance on the driver. The dimensions of the console are finessed in an attempt to create a sporty upscale feel. It's a painstaking process where every minor change has a major effect. You can see how the tapes join here uh, are widening the interior a little bit. So, so instead of just being too concentrated in the driver, we're giving it a little bit to the passenger somehow. Uh, but just to move in this, just moving this line out gives a little bit of shoulder as well. And then after that, we modify some of the console, we give it a little more height. We have integrated the full width from here to the other side, so it's, it feels more natural, you know, for a sports car. So it was just tweaking it to become as sporty as the exterior was. The big thing is how the controls are sort of uh, turned towards the driver. Uh, that's a very European sports sedan kind of aesthetic. It feels like a, like a pilot's uh, you know, control deck. Coming up, Schreier's new design will be tested and converted for racing to complete the Optimus transformation from bland to bold. But can the new kid on the block pull it off against manufacturers with decades of race experience? The race for the podium hits a bump in the road. Look at this. Oh, contact down to the inside. Big hit kill. Korea's oldest car maker is getting a fresh new face for the 21st century. To meet the exacting standards of this sleek new design, the overhauled Optima will have to be mounted on one of the most technologically advanced assembly lines in North America. But there's one more hurdle to overcome before it hits that line, testing the car for entry into the North American market in one of the harshest climates on the continent. Out here, in the middle of the Mojave Desert, the Optima is being put through its paces. It's a perfect place to gain ground on the competition in the industry's toughest market. The primary reason why we chose this wonderful location in the middle of the desert for the Akiva Proving Grounds is because mostly of the climate and the isolation from everybody else from the prying eyes so we could test our new model vehicles without people poking around. 
New car development is a top secret process and innovations have been scooped. It's also the safety of having closed roads where we could do aggressive dynamic handling tests and high speed tests without having traffic. The relentless heat of the desert makes for brutal conditions. Engines burn hot and road temperatures approach the boiling point. One of the advantages of the extreme climate allows us to put our cars through a durability cycle and that either allows them to heat soak, um, be exposed to extreme wind, sun loads, also cold. And that extreme cold is particularly important for cars coming to a harsh Canadian climate. The Belgian block road is a winding road that has uh, not only a rough surface, but elevation changes as well as asphalt patches on it. It really works the suspension as well as uh, creating tire impacts. So we really want to see how the car goes through there as well as lasts in that uh, environment. Sideways is part of the suspension articulation test. It's a durability. It basically twists the entire car so that the suspension is working in the opposite direction on the front and the rear axles of the car. And we're checking for squeaks, rattles, part failures, articulation and suspension, bottoming out. The VDA or the vehicle dynamics area is where we test for extreme vehicle dynamics. It's where we do some tuning for our vehicle stability controls to ensure that a vehicle no matter how hard you run it or slam it around, it will stay in control and recover itself. The water trough is a water intrusion test. We run the vehicles through the water trough, which has a bump in the middle of it. The main point of this is to test to see if water will intrude into the vehicle from the under chassis through suspension components or bolt holes. These tests are analyzed at Kia, and the engineering is perfected before the car is prepped for the high-tech assembly line. The result? a factory-ready prototype that will eventually face its biggest public relations test on the racetrack. This is the World Challenge Series, so it is the real deal. The Kia race team at Kinetic Motorsports take Optimas right off the factory floor and convert them to race-ready vehicles set to change the image of this grocery getter once and for all. The production car, when we first got it, I think was, uh, was a very pleasant surprise. Um, it was both a, uh, it, it looked like a sleek car, so aerodynamically, um, we, we didn't have any sort of uh, sharp edges jutting out to, for us to sort of try and overcome. Uh, the, the, the fundamental chassis design was very, very strong and very robust and allowed us to be able to communicate changes that we needed in the chassis through suspension changes on the racetrack. So it, it was a good base design. After the car is stripped down and analyzed, the structure is reinforced, starting with the roll cage. An integral part of the chassis itself, we, weld, we seam weld the chassis and um, weld a roll cage into it, which offers um, stiffness, uh, rigidity to the chassis. It helps support a lot of the suspension loads that we're putting into it, and it's also a safety device for the driver. The racing car will operate at a different ride height to the road car, which means it's much lower and the geometry of the suspension links is then different. Kinetic has to stay as true to the original as they can. To race in the Pirelli World Challenge, teams must use cars that come off the actual assembly line with strict limits on what can be modified. Take the motor, for example. They upped the horsepower from 274 in the Turbo Optima to around 360 in the race car, but it's the same motor. Yeah, the Optimus engine is a, is a very good platform for racing. When we first disassembled the engine and did our initial analysis on it, you know, a lot of the parts were built uh, for strength, very robust, and, and it, you know, it's turned out to be a very good, very reliable race engine. With the Kia Optima, it is a very nicely designed and streamlined vehicle. It's uh, got a very nice roof line to it. If you look at it from the side profile, you have to make sure that the aerodynamics on the vehicle are suited to the power that you're putting out. In World Challenge, you're allowed to add a rear wing and a front splitter. And the front splitter is the plate that goes underneath the front of the car. It sits just below the engine. The splitter redirects airflow from under the front bumper, contributing to downforce, and diverts air to cool the brakes. We are allowed to replace the hood, and we use a carbon fiber hood. We change the design look. It has some louvered panels in the, on the top of it. And that's again for air extraction. We're ducting the radiator, which sits in the engine compartment, and as well as the turbo intercooler. So 
but it doesn't get, again, cause any heat issues for the driver and makes it aerodynamically better. A major hurdle they have in this car is something they just can't change for competition. The Optima is a front-wheel drive car, racing against rear-wheel drive competition. What we have to do for that is to work a lot with handling and suspension and the differential in the car. I think we have a good handle on that right now. The car seems to be performing very well. Motorsports is always about pushing boundaries. It's one thing to line up against the heavy hitters. It's another altogether to beat them. How well they do at the track will go a long way to changing the public's perception and drive sales at the dealership. Racing is now being able to showcase the, uh, the capabilities of the car, which go way beyond the aesthetics of it and, and the design and the comfort and the safety of it. This is actually showing its capabilities as a chassis, and I think that's the really exciting thing. We're able to extract every last ounce of horsepower and be able to transmit it down onto the track because it's been fundamentally designed well. Coming up, taking this world-class design and mounting it onto a mind-blowing assembly line merging workers and robots. Will the launch of the new Optima be enough to destroy the bland reputation of Kia Pass? Bad news lasts forever. Good news takes forever. When Kia decided it wanted a new image, they went straight to the top of the design world to make it happen. Legendary designer Peter Schreier was tasked with reinventing the Optima from a plain, practical car into something bold and luxurious. With anticipated demand high, Kia turned to its cutting-edge plant to tackle production. Kia's manufacturing facility, West Point, Georgia. Everything that happens here is state-of-the-art. From the initial punch of metal to the finished product, this entire facility is a technological marvel, one of the most advanced in the entire industry. One of the things that we have to do is work with 3D imaging. Uh, putting together a car from the concept is quite a difficult challenge. We teach our robots through computer programs, and we have to use 3D imaging to allow us to do that. We, um, we take the virtual car, and we rough in programs, so when we get a physical car, we all we have to do is fine tune it. This facility cost $1 billion to build, takes up 650 acres of land, and employs more than 3,000 people. When the Optima was added to the lineup, $100 million was spent on expansion, and nearly 1,000 staff hired. Anytime you add additional manpower, that's more jobs, so that's more business for the community. Five years on, this factory is a thriving operation, setting standards for productivity in North America. Workers are routinely sent to the company's headquarters in Korea to learn the latest in manufacturing techniques. Going to Korea is great. For one, you get to see how other cultures are. And you go in and the trainers are great. They show you different things and different ways to maneuver the parts to where it makes things easier and they just do a great, great, great job training all of us. With a skilled workforce in place, the Optima was slotted into production. Putting the car together starts with massive 44,000 pound coils of steel that are stamped into parts. After loading into the press line, the first operation of the press line is what we call the Optin die, which is a draw die. It draws that metal into a recognizable part. It may punch out a hole, it may cut off some of the edges. So as it goes down to each process in the stamping line, the part becomes a lot more recognizable before it goes off onto the AP system. The AP system is where you will see the robots. They will pick the panels up and they will put them in to each individual rack, which is preparing them to go to the welding shop. In a mere 24 hours, this roll of steel will become an Optima. We have produced between 1,300 and 1,500 cars daily. The welding shop where the bodies are assembled is one of the most automated in the industry. There are 283 robots in operation here, executing 2,000 welds on each car in just 90 minutes. The welding process for the Optima is a little bit different. We wanted to give it a feel of a much higher class vehicle. So the, the structure that we put in this vehicle is a lot of high strength steel. Uh, it's 
a little bit more difficult to weld, but if you can conquer the welding process on the car, you actually get a much better riding vehicle, much better sounding vehicle. The structure of the vehicle itself is it's much, much better. It's a, it's a lot safer car to deal with. This would be the most sophisticated car that Kia had ever tried to produce. We wanted to take what the fit and finish was to the next level. So many of the gaps, flushness standards that we use, you're gonna find that they're in the plus or minus one millimeter. There's even some items that are in the plus or minus a half a millimeter. That puts challenges to not only our team members, but to our equipment. How do we maintain that on a daily basis? We teach our team members what those standards are, and then we measure them and feed them back into the appropriate process. So there are some very tight tolerances, but we feel that that's what is bringing those customers to us, that this is a high level vehicle. The assembly process here in Georgia is high tech car making at its best. But will it be enough to stand up to the scrutiny of the industry's harshest critics and turn out a winner? Reinventing the Kia Optima, it meant not only a bold new design, but the complete reworking of a factory to accommodate it. Here in the heart of Georgia, futuristic robots and highly skilled workers pair up in a masterpiece of assembly line technology. When you think about a factory like uh, Kia's in Georgia, thousands of parts from hundreds of companies in dozens of countries, and somehow these things all have to come together to uh, form a car. With the bare bones frame stamped and welded, workers attach the doors, hood, and trunk lid. Even this assembly is difficult thanks to the new sloping, intricate design, a far cry from the crossover vehicles being made here. The Optima is harder for us to assemble because of the height of the vehicle, the challenges of the door openings being smaller. Uh, you don't have this big lift gate or hatch on the back of the vehicle to enter and exit out of, so all that are, are unique challenges. With the car's structure achieved, it's time for a high-tech paint job. Most of the prior steps take a few short minutes, but the paint job takes time. Eight hours, to be exact. We start with an electric deposition process that coats the inside and out underneath the car and the cavities to give us corrosion protection. Uh, from there, we sealed the seams of the body to prevent moisture and fumes from getting inside the cabin. From there, it's a primer and, uh, and then a top coat process and it's all automatically done by robots. The Optima will travel six miles as it goes through the painting process. The thing about this particular shop is we're extremely versatile. We can paint 21 different colors across all the different models we build. Uh, the Optima is a great big part of that. We have the ability to produce a world-class quality vehicle. We've done that within uh, three years of the launch with a new facility, new models, and new people. And seeing all of those things come together, uh, it's a tremendous accomplishment. Covering three quarters of a million square feet of real estate, workers assemble the Optima and two other vehicles on an integrated line. The Optima being a car platform uh, was a challenge for us because we built CUVs up to that point. So we had to not only take a new product, we had to teach team members to work on vehicles at a different height. Door openings were different. 30 suppliers work on and off-site to build components for the main line, like this door assembly. Parts are made to order and ensure the line can keep up with demand. On the main line, the body travels through 347 workstations and hundreds of pairs of hands. So each station has about 47 to 50 seconds to do their work. It's almost like a ballet out there. When they're working and when, when the shifts are running well, you can stand back and watch. Team members don't look rushed, it's just a very smooth organization, but also lets us know when they're having trouble, you can pick up on that. First up, the cabin electrical harness is secured into place, followed by the electronics and the dashboard. The headliner is installed. After that, a signal is given to the engine and chassis supplier next door that it's time to join the party. The chassis supplier then 
designates all of the components necessary to build that chassis. They meet up with the vehicle at just the right time in our chassis marriage and are bolted into that vehicle. Once it comes off the line, the engine gets fired up and the vehicle is taken to the test track where all its systems are scrutinized, including steering, suspension, and acceleration. All totaled, the assembly of an Optima takes less than a day. So what makes the Optima a success is, in short, look behind me right now. Look at the people working on this. All the automation that we have, all of the innovation that we have, it's nothing without the heart and soul, which is our people. All of them have a common passion for building a world-class vehicle right here in West Point, Georgia. Here, at the end of the assembly line, the cars are packaged and prepared for shipping to markets around the world. But not all of these cars will end up in dealer lots or your neighborhood driveways. It's right here where the Kia race team from Kinetic Motorsports chooses their winners to compete against the likes of Porsche and BMW in the Pirelli World Challenge Series. The Optima race car actually came from this plant. Uh, it was a vehicle we built here on this line. Uh, and during the original discussion, we thought that talking with the team, uh, the race team, that they would gut the interior of the car and part of the metal and then add reinforcement. What we found is when they started to look at our vehicle that the, the actual metal structure of our vehicle was in fact enough of what they needed and actually better equipped for, for what they needed to set up their race car. So there was only small modifications that needed to be made. Welcome to Detroit, the Motor City. The Optima is competing in the Pirelli World Challenge and has to grab headlines and race glory to truly put its critics to rest. Victory, so the theory goes, will elevate the sedan to the next level. When you see a Kia out on track with things like Porsches and Mustangs, muscle cars, uh, Kia's come a long way in the past you know, 10 years, just before they had this you know, reputation for just having cheap, affordable car. Standing out is not going to be easy. The Optima will race in a series with the most experienced teams and manufacturers. The brands that we're racing against have had more than a century of racing, um, so we're really the rookies at this. We're actually kind of punching up a weight class. The Korean car maker is using veteran drivers on the race circuit to give them the best chance on the track and also to provide invaluable data on how the car performs. Every time I pull the gear, the car, oh, 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 you know. Michael Galati was our first choice. He's kind of the, the number one driver in the team, and uh, his credentials speak for themselves. He's been World Challenge champion five times. He's a very fast driver, but very bright and very good feedback in terms of what the car needs to keep getting better. I drove for Audi for seven years and uh, Gran Turismo, and I, I drove for uh, Honda and um, Volvo. I mean, I drove all kinds of cars. And from the base of this, the Optima, it's fantastic because uh, you got a very good base car. Late modifications are being made based on the driver's practice runs and qualifying sessions. Um, I think it's a, it's a super important thing to have a good communication and a good chemistry between the drivers and the engineer so that you can absolutely extract every ounce of feedback and then be able to translate those, those feelings that they get in their bums and their backs and, and make the changes to the car that then make it quicker. And then... It's go time. Start your engines! The first time I saw the car on the track, I mean, I was surprised because it was one of its first shakedown runs. And it's only got a two liter turbocharged engine, but the first time I saw it, it was quick. It's like if someone's in a Mustang in the series on track and they get passed by a four door Kia Optima in a straight line, I mean, that's, that's kind of a shocker. And, you know, it's kind of cool. Competing against established veterans in a serious series like this is like throwing yourself to the wolves. The critics are watching, so Kia has to prove its mettle. On a track like Detroit where there's no margin for error, you know, you, you've got to be smart and, and get the most out of the car, but really think. Unexpectedly, the team gets a rude introduction to just what can go wrong. Big move and a contact down to the inside. Big hit count. The 36 Kia, look at the damage to the right side. Coming up, regrouping after the crash. Can the Optima rebound from the hard knock in Detroit? 
high-end design, high-tech production, and the hopes of a company tied to its success, the Optima has undergone a complete transformation. The company is putting billions of dollars in planning and investment on the line here at the track, entering the Optima in its first ever production car race series to silence the critics once and for all. If you're really known for also taking part in racing and being successful, it's, it's a different thing for the brand. Look at this! Oh, big move and a contact down to the inside. Big hit kill. Michael Galati gets turned in the 36 Kia. Look at the damage to the right side. In a mid-season race in Detroit, the race team has its first taste of adversity after a crash. Yesterday was a tough day at the office. Uh, after we started the race, we had a big shunt, we had a crash. I got hit right in the right corner, enter in the corner. Look at this! Oh! And I thought at the time we were done. Down to the inside, big hit. But then again, uh, I was be able to restart and keep on going. For all my year of racing, I shunted like that. I thought I was going to be done for the, for the day. But actually, the Optima, the structural, it was so good that we would be able to finish the, the race in eighth place. This is a very dangerous sport. And you're doing the same. Well, I'm like, whoa, whoa, we're both hanging over there. We're both made it together. It was a quite a day, but then the guys did a fantastic job of fixing the car, and the car rolled up together. I think the expectations for the Optima uh, from a racing perspective uh, is that uh, we're going to go out and win a, win a few races. Um, obviously, the, this is our first year as a development year. Despite the setback, the team is far from discouraged. They've come a long way with this car since its bold new design was first sketched out. Everyone from the drivers to the technicians to the executives watching from a distance want to stay positive. With any race program, the first priority is reliability. You need to finish races. You need to show that you can be there and be a credible threat for, for finishing races. And then the next step is to get progressively faster. After the meltdown in Detroit, the team regroups to find out what went wrong. Turns out the car was unstable under the hard braking needed on the Detroit track, so the team gets to work on a combination of new sway bars and different shock valving to make braking more stable. The launch control mechanism, which helps the car leap forward from a standing start, needed retuning. It was way too slow. And finally, they tackle the turbo ramp up. Drivers complain that the power coming off the corners is too dramatic, causing the wheels to spin. The guys in the engine shop reprogram the car's electronics to allow the power to be fed in more smoothly. North of the border at the CTMP Raceway, formerly known as Mosport, the Optima team is ready to try for glory once again. And a great launch. The team has learned from past mistakes, but with the industry's toughest critics closely monitoring their performance, the buck stops here. They want to land on the podium today. People like to get behind the underdog. They like to, to root for the, the folks who maybe are new and shouldn't do that well, but then overachieve. A photo finish for the Kia boys, their first victory in World Challenge, and they make it a 1-2. The Optima has just won its uh, first race. We came first and second, so we're absolutely ecstatic. It was a double header weekend, so we actually got a, a, an unbelievable collection of silverware. The 1-2 win is a coup for the long shot, another defining moment for the new Optima. A car that started life as a grocery getter is now piling up international design awards and demanding respect on the track. To see a mainstream front-wheel drive family sedan racing against Porsche Caymans and Mustang GTs and beating them, um, that had to look pretty good from Kia's perspective. When we participate in racing, it puts here in a, in a different level. Somehow we belong to the club. If you're really known for also taking part in racing and being successful, it's, it's a different thing for the brand. So it's not only the design, it's also other things that are very important and that we're doing. The surprise has been that a, a brand that had sort of come from seemingly nowhere, you know, 16 years in the United States with absolutely no racing heritage, has, uh, there's championship material in these cars and I think we're going to realize that next year. Seeing a Kia Optima on the street, everybody's head turns. What's that car? But then when you see it as a race car, it's even, it's even more passion-inspiring. It's the thing that's up on the kid's wall on a poster.
Well, the Optima coming here, it's sustained growth in the company. It shows off our new design direction and ability to compete in a market that where others didn't see we could compete. And when you see in reality people driving this car, you get this emotion that I can't really explain. It's a good feeling. It's a really good feeling. But I don't think this has ever happened as fast in our, that in my history, that a company has gone so dramatically 180 from virtually unnoticed and unloved, if you will, to being desired and envied. And it is, it, it has everything to do with design. We really went out to get a car that is a statement, that you want to be seen in it, you want to be proud about it and say, yes, I bought that.